After 20 years of intensive research, scientists at UCT Medical School have identified the genetic anomaly linked to cardiac failure in young adults. Derek Watts meets the boffins behind this groundbreaking discovery. He just packed an enormous amount, sport, work, whatever. He packed an enormous amount of, of effort into his day. He actually happened to say to one of his friends, life's too short to say that it's too short. And he achieved so much in his matric year. He's, he was also doing his, uh, the President's Award. He soared in his matric year. Proud appearance we couldn't have been. And he looked so beautiful at his matric dance. The Baileys are a close-knit family. Jenny and Alan are competitive athletes who shared their passion for sport with Steve. At 18, he was the top cross-country runner at his school. He represented South Africa at the Maths Olympiad in Kazakhstan, for which he was awarded a Springbok blazer. I remember him helping me with my math tutorial the night before, and I said, don't worry, I don't want to do it now, we'll do it tomorrow. Steve's parents were always concerned about his safety. His father, Alan, used to check his outside door every night. But what they discovered on the morning of the 19th of August they could never have imagined. And then I walked into his room and I switched the light on and uh, yeah, his face was um, in the pillow and um, uh, yeah, uh, I screamed beyond I knew, I, I, I knew. The paramedics did come and they did work on him for up to two hours. They did everything humanly possible. My first thought was what could have happened to him? He must have had a brain aneurysm or something. As avid soccer fans, the Baileys may have heard about sudden cardiac deaths with several international players collapsing on the field, but they'd never have thought that it could strike their own family. We knew for, for a fact that he was exceptionally fit, but the two warning uh, symptoms, the first one happened when he was about 14, and he, he fell in the bath, and the GP came to this, pretty much the same conclusion that we had, that the room was so full of steam that there wasn't enough sort of air in the, in the, in the room. Steve fainted again two years later. In hindsight, this was the first indication of a rare heart condition. ARVC, or arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, is a rare genetic heart disease, and what makes it most tragic is that it usually affects young people. Professor Bongani Mayorsi, Dean of UCT Medical School, first started researching the condition 20 years ago when a family he was treating lost two siblings in short succession to ARVC and their two cousins were also affected. This year they finally cracked the genetic code. Yes, I am proud and relieved uh, because uh, this was a project that seemed to be taking almost a lifetime to complete. Despite many PhD students working on it over the years and with extensive international collaboration, the research was painstaking. Uh, there were too few members of the family that were affected. Uh, the technology available at the time for identifying a genetic mutation in, in the family required that you had at least 10 members of the family that are affected. And in those days, it took years to analyze one gene. Then in 2009, genome sequencing blew the field of genetic research wide open, says geneticist Dr. Khasna Shabuddin. You can screen 19 to 20,000 genes within a matter of hours. And you call it genetics I on steroids. I do call it genetics on steroids. It really is. It's fast and it's quick. As humans, we have 3 billion letters in our genetic code, and we're looking for that one spelling error that takes you from a healthy individual to now having heart disease. What the research team found was that the gene CDH2, which is linked to heart function and which we all have, mutates, it causes disease in the heart muscle. So what this gene does is it links two heart cells together. So if this is a heart cell and that is one, this is CDH2 and it links the heart cell together. And if CDH2 doesn't function properly, you have the heart cells coming apart and it's doing this. So the current cannot pass from one heart cell to the other. You have an enlarged right side of the heart. And the theory is that as the cells lose contact, they then die and in their place you get scar formation as well as fat cells. And it is that scar and fat cells that is abnormal and causes the abnormal electrical activity in the heart and therefore leads to sudden death. 
What this small team has discovered is a first in the world and will help the diagnosis and treatment of heart muscle disease in the future. Now this is just one whole genome in a cell which contains at least 19,000 genes. That's right, and this is the gene, but we were still looking for one letter in that gene that was misspelled. So your genetic code consists of ATCG, the four bases, and that little base is the spelling error that caused that whole disease within that family. When the news broke, the Baileys contacted specialist physician Dr. Sarah Krauss, who works closely with the families. Sometimes there are no symptoms beforehand. I think that any individual, young individual that has a fainting episode during sport should be looked at or it should be taken seriously. The only difficulty is that some of those screening tests might be negative. So the ECG might be normal, the MRI could even be normal. And that's because the disease starts at a microscopic level. And ironically, when the person is extremely athletic, it accelerates the onset of sudden death. He had seen us, the joy and the passion that we had received out of, out of exercise, and we actually encouraged him. He was just so driven and he loved it, so it never entered our minds. At the moment in South Africa, there isn't really a platform for these families to be screened. Professor Mayosi has started a clinic here a long time ago that has, is a cardiogenetics clinic, and we're trying to, through research and the cardiac clinic at Hurtiskir, trying to build the service where we can screen family members. One of the most difficult things that we've had to deal with is because of our daughter and I think a huge concern is possibly not only for herself but possibly for her own future children one day. Since the age of 14, Bianca has undergone numerous tests, ECGs, MRIs, but no genetic testing as yet. They haven't found anything and I do have to go for follow-up checks as just routine. It's very anxiety provoking. But now we can clearly show the family and test the individuals and say, you have the mutation, which means you're at risk for developing the condition. Or, no, you don't have the mutation, and so, yes, you can go and run that marathon, or, yes, you can have children and not worry. If you have the condition and you're not showing signs of the disease, we can plan a treatment strategy. It's being heralded as the biggest breakthrough in South African cardiology since Dr. Chris Barnard's very first heart transplant. If we find a mechanism underlying sudden cardiac death and we can stop it, then we would help a lot more people than, for example, heart transplantation would, would, would assist. This genetic mutation lies in a biological pathway that had not been associated with cardiomyopathy before. We're revealing a new target for potential development of new drugs in the future. How was this news received internationally? It was phenomenal. I, mean, I think it was bigger than we expected it to be. In South Africa, it was even more amazing. I was getting calls from spouses and fathers and mothers who the, one of their children had just died recently, and they were looking for answers and explanations as to what um, had happened um, to their children. If your child has had one or two fainting episodes that don't have obvious reasons, you should at least have them checked out and do an ECG and to save the terrible tragedy we've been through it seems to me a no-brainer really.